Hello, what's up? How are you guys today? If you're new here, my name's Elise. Welcome to my channel. And if you're not new, welcome back. It's always great to see you. Thanks for stopping in. Today we're doing the end of year book tag. And I know, I know, I'm a little bit late to the game. But honestly, what's new? Life's chaotic. You probably get it. Before I get started, I did want to say this is the first video since we have hit 1,000 subscribers. Yay! Thank you so much for joining this bookish fam. I can't wait to talk more books with you guys. I love this channel so much. It brings me so much joy, and I can't wait to see it grow and see what we get up to next year. I believe the original creator of this tag is Ariel Bissett. I will leave their information down below for you in case you want to go check them out yourselves. But let's just get right on into it because because I am the queen of long introductions and I'm really trying to work on that. <laughs> the first question is, are there any books you started this year that you need to finish? <laughs> always, literally always. As a mood reader, you get it. Your attention is going everywhere. So first I have Jody Thomas's Just Down the Road. It is a Harmony series book. I think it's the fourth book, but I'm not having any trouble just jumping into it at all. I'm actually having a really delightful time. I'm tandem listening and reading to it at the same time. If you're into like small town romance, cowboys, and just kind of like cozy reads, a lot of Jodi Thomas's books are available on the Audible library, so that's how I'm listening and reading at the same time. This book is about this town harmony there are several different point of views that we're following we're following a doctor who has run away from her family and kind of like this arranged marriage and so she's kind of hiding out in this small town in texas we have a rancher named tinch who lost his wife three years ago to cancer and just kind of he doesn't want to exist anymore he's just kind of there something happens that kind of reawakens him and then we have a young teenager who's kind of trying to become a musician and then we also have a young adult a little older than teenager who recently lost someone in her family and is kind of trying to recover from the grief and figure out a new life without her uncle it's really cute so far there's a lot of humor in it i'm enjoying the relationship that's kind of blooming between the doctor and the rancher right now there's a little bit of a mystery element as well next we have misery by steve Stephen King, my boyfriend and I are currently buttery, buddy reading this right now. I am having a fantastic time. I'm currently on page 96, about a third of the way through. This writing is so riveting. Normally I'm not for like horror or suspense or thrillers or anything like that, but I am just fascinated by this book. I, I'm having a fantastic time. Misery is about this author, this very famous author, kind of akin to Stephen King himself, who writes this very famous book series called Misery. He finishes the series, gets in a car accident, and then wakes up in severe pain. His legs are debilitatingly broken, and this crazy fan has found him and saved him and is kind of holding him hostage until he writes a novel and like makes the series continue the way that she wants. This lady is insane and I just I'm really excited to continue it. Then we have The Electric Kingdom by David Arnold. I'm currently reading this as part of a video where I finish all of my current reads so I'm about halfway through with this. I'm also listening and reading it at the same time. I am having a really good time. It reminds me a lot of The Sea of Tranquility which if you are new to my channel I read that in the spring maybe early summer and it has been one of my favorite reads of the year so far and so it has that similar vibe to it that like mysterious unknown time futuristic vibe i am just having a really good time i'm kind of drawing it out i kind of don't want it to finish but i need to finish it soon then we have talons of power which is the ninth book yeah the ninth book in the wings of fire series by Tui t sutherland i started this because the boys that i nanny we sometimes listen to audiobooks on the drive to their home which is about an hour so we started this book so i'm about 25 percent through so i'll pick the rest of it up later and finish it on my own. Then there is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. I started this on audiobook and I'm about 30% through and then I'll try and finish the rest of it reading in that 
her and read video that will come out hopefully soon. <laughs> I've read the back of it, but I still kind of don't get where it's going and I'm 30% of the way through. I'm still kind of baffled about like what the purpose is and where we're going with it, how it's gonna go. What has happened is that there's this lady who had a family, she had three kids. Her third, her daughter Poppy was her angel, her best friend, her star child. When she's like 15 or 16, her daughter goes missing. They can't find her nothing 10 years later she finally meets a man and it's like okay i'm ready to start moving on and he has a daughter who's like nine years old or something and looks exactly like poppy a lot of the same mannerisms and things like that so that's kind of where i am her and this guy are kind of going out a little bit more regularly so i'm like where is this going is it the daughter herself did something happen did her daughter have a daughter i'm ready i'm ready to find out I, I need to finish it then we have a little life by hanya yanagihara i started this for a video and i don't know if i'm gonna end up finishing that video to be determined i will let you know if you keep watching my videos i'm currently about 30 percent through so this bookmark is not indicative of where i am because i am listening to it on audio i did start it on libby and i could not finish it it's like 36 hours long you guys and even listening to it at like 1.7 speed I barely got through anything because it's just it's so long it's very dense there's a lot of tough difficult topics happening that being said I am mostly enjoying it however I just I I got a little tired of Jude <laughs> his friends are so willing to give and be there for him but he's so reclusive not without reasons but it's just very much like the world revolves around jude and jude gets to set the pace and the tone and decide whether or not you know this friend gets to actually be his friend and that started bothering me a little bit i'm sure if i push through a little bit more that will probably fix itself or we'll just move past that and i won't be as annoyed but that's where i stopped about 30 percent through i'm sure we'll get past that so this book follows four friends who became friends in college it kind of chronicles their life just as they get out of college they're broke they're young they don't know where what they're doing with life they just moved to new york they're finding their way and kind of as they find their way years and years and years and years down the line i think currently right now jude is like 34 36 so we've we've gone like a little over a decade already and i think it it ends when they're like old men so it really does chronicle their life i do have one ebook that i'm currently in the middle of i started it yesterday and that is needs more time by nelly wilson this is a very short story it's like 250 pages which honestly is perfect right now and it's about this teacher who taught during covid and she's very 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 burnt out her school sends these kids on this kind of outdoor camp retreat but you know the teachers need to be present as well so she's there and that's where the story is and i think she kind of meets one of the counselors or the owner of the camp and they kind of connect and i think she is kind of able to work through you know a little bit of the difficulties of teaching during covid and i think there's a romance i hear it's a little bit steamy and spicy i'm i'm really enjoying it because i was a teacher during covid if you are new to my channel i taught english in south korea for three years and two of those years were during the covid lockdown it everyone everyone had their own experience everyone had a tough time but it was it was an experience you know trying to be your best self for these kids when you're tired and scared and lonely and you don't know where the world is going you're not with your family you're not with your friends and there's you know it's it was a lot and so reading this book i feel very seen and understood like, if i could highlight the things that i could relate to i'd be highlighting like 90 percent of this book i'm really enjoying it i like that it's short and sweet i like that it's spicy i love that it has nature and outdoors because all of those are like my favorite things ever so mm, a little sip break okay moving on to the next question do you have an autumnal book to transition into the end of the year i could really only think of one but it's absolutely perfect and that is the very secret society of irregular witches by sangu mandana i read this earlier this year and had the best time reading it it's a very cozy book which is perfect for fall and for the winter but my biggest reason for suggesting it is because it takes place in the end of november and beginning of december all the way up to like winter solstice so i think it's just perfect 
perfect for getting those cozy fall vibes but like transitioning into winter and the winter season and the you know the winter solstice this book is about a society of witches and in the modern times witches do not collect together they meet like once a month very secretly they do this to protect themselves after you know the salem witch trials and witches being hunted and feared so witches do not stay together there is also this curse upon them that for some reason every witch's mother dies and they grow up an orphan our main female character mika gets a message saying that there is a orphanage or this home who has three witch orphans and will she come and teach them to control their powers growing up alone as an orphan mika had to figure out her powers for herself so you know having the opportunity to give these witches the opportunity to train and actually learn about their powers she just can't pass that up and so she goes to this estate kind of in the middle of nowhere with these eclectic group of guardians watching over these girls who are very protective of these orphan witches and it's just such a great vibe the found family is fantastic the setting is fantastic the house is really cozy there's also like a, a you know a garden and things like that the kids are fun because kids will be kids and they say kid things and you, you're just like oh man there's also a grumpy librarian who works here and is very protective of the kids as well there's also romance in it it's grumpy sunshine kind of reluctant you know forced proximity type thing before i continue i would love to know what book you recommend for this category what book do you think is perfect transition book from fall to winter please let me know in the comments the next question is are there any new releases you are still waiting for as for coming out between now and the end of 2024 no but there are some recent releases that i would really like to try and read the odds are really low first we have iron flame it is the sequel to fourth wing i've been seeing everyone reacting to it i want to read it but the odds are really low <laughs> Same with Better Hate Than Never. I would love to read this. I would love to read it during the autumn season before it wraps up. Fingers crossed, but we will see. Again, the odds are low. This is the sequel to Two Wrongs Make a Right, also by Chloe Lisset. It follows her sister Kate and what is his name? Christopher. They have like a very love-hate relationship. Their families are friends or something like that. So we get to follow them on their journey. And last but not least of new recent releases, that is Check In Mate by Allie Hazelwood. I would love to read this. I've heard really great things about it. I hear it's her best one yet. I want to support my queen, but I don't know if I'll have the time, but I, I really want to. <laughs> this book follows Mallory, who had a family member who taught her to play chess, who loved chess, and then that family member passes away, and she never wants anything to do with chess anymore. Her friend has an empty spot on their chess team and really needs someone to play, and when Mallory realizes that she can do this professionally and make money from it, she decides to hop in. And then, of course, there is a rival involved, rivals to lovers. It is YA, so there's no spice. I hear it's like closed door or off the, off the scene or whatever that's called, but I want to try and read this. I want to so badly. I want to just drop everything I'm reading and then pick this up, but I know if I do that, then I'll drop this and then pick something else up eventually, so I need to start finishing what I've started. The next question is, what are three books you want to read before the end of the year? I want to try and read more than three books, but for sure three books I really want to read. Like, top priority, Out on a Limb by Hannah Bonham Young. If you saw my recent haul video, my friend Autumn purchased this for me. Not just because she got it for me, but I've been wanting to read this ever since it came out. It just looks like one of those books that i'm going to absolutely enjoy i need more romance in my life i've been reading a lot of like literary fiction and science fiction and fantasy lately and i need like just a good wholesome romance <laughs> Then we have Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. My boyfriend chose this for my TBR in November. Y'all, I have really strayed from that TBR. I'm so sorry, Cooper, but I think he'll forgive me. But this is one that made it on the list, and my Libby hold for the audiobook just came in so that I can tandem listen and read it physically as well. This book is about an orc who is a mercenary and just kind of gets tired of that lifestyle and decides to open up an intergalactic coffee shop. And it's like the first time that these people have interacted with coffee before in their life. I think some of 
their old like people that they defeated or did their mercenary stuff with come and try to like mess things up for her I don't really know but I just hear it's so cozy it's fantastic vibes everyone who's read it has had a good time and I'm ready to have a good time reading it <laughs> then we have Love Light Farms by BK Borison I am so ready to finally get this series started I also have the next two books in this series so if I really love this I can just hop right into those apparently this follows our main female character Stella who's trying to save her family's Christmas tree farm or she's just trying to save the Christmas tree farm she's loved since she was a kid so there's some sort of like Instagram social media prize or like competition and if she wins she would get a hundred thousand dollars cash prize but she wants to make it seem like a romantic destination holiday so she needs a boyfriend and in jumps in Luca who I think is her best friend and so they're gonna fake date to try and win the competition that sounds so cute <laughs> i'm really ready to read this the next question is is there a book you think could still shock you and become your favorite of the year y'all i don't know because recently i read all my rage by sabati here and i've had some excellent reads this year but this one i think surpasses them all like by far i don't know if anything can beat this this year I mean, even a very secret society of irregular witches. These are five, both five star reads, but this one is just phenomenal. So I don't know if there's anything that can surpass that, but if I were to wager a guess, I have been wanting to read this book for a really long time. And what I've heard from other readers really already has it resonating with me. And that is the picture of Dorian Gray. Do I kind of match it? I feel like we kind of match. <laughs> <laughs> this is a classic by Oscar Wilde and it's about a man who has this painting that he so covets of himself like a portrait of himself because I have heard of por the portrait of Dorian Gray as well or maybe that's maybe I made that up I don't know I thought I've heard that but don't quote me on that please anyway he has a portrait of himself it's just so beautiful but the more things that Dorian Gray does because he's a very morally gray very flawed human the more things he does that are not good, the uglier the portrait becomes. And like, he goes into the spiral. I really want to annotate it. I think that it would just resonate with me and just be one of those books that lingers. Like, maybe it's not the most enjoyable experience reading it, but it just sticks in your brain rent-free. And that makes a phenomenal book, in my opinion. Last but not least, it says, have you already started making reading plans for 2024? I have. I am kind of still deciding on a few things, but I have come to the conclusion about at least two things. First things first, have you guys seen that trend where it's like 23 books in 2023 or 24 books in 2024 kind of thing? Well, instead of doing 24 books in 2024, I'm gonna do 24 book series in 2024 because we all know that I am insane and I have no control when it comes to reading series. So hopefully having this challenge will help me to finish series or at least get caught up to where that series has finished or completed so far. For example, if I start Icebreaker, I will read up into the Wildfire, which is the most recent release in the series, so that'll technically be completed for that time. So that is my first goal of 2024. We're really going to focus on getting those series finished up until the point that they have been completed so far. The next thing and this one is really important to me do you see this stack right here these two stacks actually you can't really see them very well I was honestly really disappointed and slightly appalled by Goodreads recently their nominations for the Goodreads Choice Awards this year the lack of diversity on the Goodreads Choice Awards for this year on the ballot was really disappointing and unprofessional in my opinion we are in 2023 let's be representative of our readers and our authors so I have made it my own personal goal these are all of my books from authors of color that I have not personally read yet so I'm making it my own personal goal to make sure that I read as many of those books those book series as possible and then I'll also be adding in more like queer books however I have some over here that I like but they're on my TBR in my brain it makes sense so like I have Loveless, it's on my December TBR. I also have Delilah Green Doesn't Care, The Charm Offensive and things like that. But I already have those like kind of planned out so they aren't in that stack, they're in a separate stack. I was just really disappointed 
And, you know, the only way that it's going to make a difference is if, you know, we say something about it, we do something about it. So that is going to be my goal. I won't only be reading series. I'll be reading other kinds of books too, like standalone books and stuff like that. But the main focus, the main priority will be those series and these authors of diversity. <laughs> I have some other books with diverse characters so I would like to read those as well but the main focus is going to be written by diverse authors because I can already assume that they're going to have diverse characters in them if that makes sense anyway I'm getting a little riled up so I'm gonna calm down a little bit I'm gonna calm down I think as for the number of books I'm gonna read I'm going to bring it down to maybe a hundred or so because I am in grad school I have decided to finally continue writing my book and get that published next year and that's gonna take a lot of time and effort I am still in a long-distance relationship although that's probably going to um, no longer be long distance in the summer I believe is when we plan on moving in so that will hopefully take a little bit of that extra time that I can add to reading or to writing or to school <laughs> um yeah she's a, she's a busy owl <laughs> All right, everyone, that concludes my end of the year book tag. I have a lot of great books that I'm still looking forward to reading, and I hope that I'm able to get through all of these books. We will find out, I guess. Stay tuned because I am starting to film and edit the end of the year wrap ups and all of those sorts of videos for the end of 2023. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're doing well whenever and wherever you're watching this video, and I will see you in my next video. Sending you good vibes.